So what is CSC for those who are not quite familiar with CSC? CSC is the human resource manager of the entire Philippine government. So as of now, we're about 1.8 million government employees, and that's not including those who are um, employed under contract of service, uh, as well as those em employed as job order contracts. Um, so um, we have seen the best, we have seen the worst um, over the past 120 years, but we are still challenged by so many surprises among which uh, leadership succession, those that are not the natural leadership succession. Um, in, the, in 1986, uh, we saw that uh, a national leadership succession that brought so many changes in the policies of the civil service. Um, we introduced um, um, restructuring in the, in the entire Philippine government as a result of um, the national leadership succession. We also introduced um, many policies um, that not just humanize bureaucracy, but um, capitalize on um, human resources um, professional uh, prof uh, professionalization. Um, and recently, and I think still, and not I think it still is, uh, we are challenged or beset by COVID nineteen pandemic, and I will share with you. Um, what um, we issued um, as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. So, um, let me start by asking all of you how much you know about HR. And I'd like to um, ask you, here, um, do you see this picture? Perhaps uh, some, and this mentioned by Sunny earlier, um, we we think of HR or human rights as like, you know, issues pertaining to extrajudicial killing, issues commit, um, problems or issues committed by our um, So I'd like to ask you um, to do a quick self-assessment of how much you know HR by agreeing strongly or disagreeing strongly um, with this statement. And can I ask you to go to menti.com uh, and use this code? Will you be able to do that? Can you go to uh, menti.com and um, log in the code 402364? So let's have um, a one minute. All right. So we have two people. Um, So I'm happy to know that um, more and more coming in um, using Menti. What's the code again, Miss Noreen? Four zero two three six four. <laughs> All right. So uh, we will take a look at the result uh, later on. Right now, we have 31, and I think you there are still a lot more of you. And I'm happy that you have um, formed a concept of what human rights are. So it's the job is easy, <laughs> easier for me now. 
All right. So thank you so much. So let's. So there are now thirty-two. All right. So thank you so much. So um, what we're introducing uh, in, in this particular session is not just um, human rights um, anywhere, but specifically how uh, we respect human rights or address human rights issues in the workplace. And as I've told Sunny earlier, um, what the Philippine government subscribed to is a rights-based approach. So how have we been able to mainstream rights-based approach in strategic policies of, um, and programs um, in, uh, in the Philippine Civil Service? So that's um, the main thing. See your hands up. Can you please raise your hands if you are working in government? All right, Michael is working in government. Rochelle is also working in government. All right. So I'm happy to know that um, we have, um, as participants in this webinar, um, government employees. So uh, our key learning takeaway, my proposed key learning takeaways uh, for this evening's um, Kumustahan are two. Uh, we hope that at the end, now we are able to share with you what this is and how the Philippine government, specifically the Civil Service Commission, has mainstreamed, meaning um, how have we been able to use this framework or approach um, in issuing and uh, developing issuing civil service policies and programs. While many of you are working in the public se sector, um, there are um, similarities in um, the policies that are issued um, in, uh, under the mantra of the uh, Philippine Labor Code. Um, and I will share with you what rules we're using uh, in the civil service. And also, uh, I'll be sharing with you two, two, two tools um, that, allows, that allow the Civil Service Commission to mainstream rights-based approach. Okay. So our agenda uh, will cover um, an introduction of what is RBA, how we're doing gender mainstreaming, or, uh, um, mainstreaming of um, RBA in human human resource policies and human resource management, and um, two RBA tools uh, interspersed with the discussion on mainstreaming. All right, so, um, so for the first agenda, let me introduce a rights-based approach. So what are basic human rights? We ought to recognize what human rights is because um, our basic concept is that if we know human rights, then it's easier for us to be able to respect human dignity. So what are these? Human rights are supreme. They're inherent. They're inalienable rights um, to life, to dignity, and self-development. Um, what are some of these um, basic human rights? It means being basic human rights is that gives you the essence as a human being. So as a human being, we have the right to life. Uh, mabuhay. Um, we also have the right to equality, the right not to be discriminated against. We also have political rights and freedoms that are actually guaranteed by the Constitution, among others. Um, so human rights belong to every person, regardless of where you are in this world. Um, it's uh, the essence that makes us human, right? So these are uh, moral standards. Ano ba yung mga panuntunan sinusunod ng human race? Okay. Um, hindi, hindi no kung sino, kundi bilang tao. And also, there are um, 
political rights and freedoms that protect us or every day, regardless of where we are, uh, where we live, where we choose to live, where we choose to work. Uh, what are some of these examples? We have the right to participate in government. We have the freedom to express our opinion. Uh, we have the freedom of movement. Um, we know that uh, in this COVID-19 pandemic, um, freedom such as the freedom to move has been cur in a way curtailed because we are asked to stay home. Right? So um, is it, is it um, absolute in a sense? Um, there is quite a restriction on some um, uh, fundamental rights. Uh, though they are guaranteed, but there are some restrictions. They are not absolute. Um, there's also a right to peaceful, assem peaceful assembly and association. Uh, and I'll mention um, in the discussion also that just like you in uh, the private sector, in the public sector, we also have the right to assemble. We have the right to um, form an association. Uh, unfortunately, unlike you in the in the private sector, we in the in the private sector, we in the public sector still cannot exercise our right to strike. Um, there's also a right to social security, right to work, uh, right to decent work, <clears throat> right to health. Again, um, right to health. Um, if we are not conscious about this in the policies and the guidelines that we issue as a human resource manager, then one of the rights that is threatened by COVID-19 pandemic is the right to health and the right to security. The right to food as well is threatened by uh, COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic because uh, um, especially those who are working in the private sector, those who are in the informal economy, um, jobs have been curtailed also. No, no work, no pay. Um, so that's a difference between the public and the private sector. So uh, those working in the public sector still continue to receive salary because of a work from home arrangement. Um, another example of um, a right is right to housing right to education, right to reparation. And um, how are we being able um, to respect and ful fulfill these rights? Um, along these rights and the basis of these rights, the underlying uh, basis are human rights principles, without which it would be difficult um, to comply with all of our, or fulfill or protect um, human rights. So um, in government, we subscribe to human rights principles such as accountability. We pay attention to vulnerable groups. Uh, that's why um, one of the landmark um, laws that was issued um, in our country is um, the senior citizens law. Um, we also believe in the principle of empowerment, quality, equity, um, good governance. I know um, there are a lot of questions about good governance. Uh, madumi dito, may mga, merong mga ahensya na uh, marumi, uh, hindi tama ang kanilang ginagawa. Uh, itong uh, department na to, na siya dapat ang um, mangunguna sa paglaban sa COVID-19 and our fight against COVID-19. Um, siya pa ang mali-mali ang um, datos. Um, there has to be also an independence of the judiciary. Uh, we subscribe to the indivisibility of um, human rights. Hindi pwedeng hati-hati. And um, we also subscribe to people's participation, non-discrimination, transparency, and legislative um, capacity. Without which, um, there are um, certain uh, levels of enjoyment um, that will be curtailed. Um, we are a signatory, as mentioned by Sani earlier, to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Matanda niya ho itong um, Treaty International Convention to. It was, the Philippines signed this in 1948. And there are several other treaties, international conventions that followed that, and I've listed them down here. Um, you can see from the, your slides. But I'd like to focus on the Universal Declaration. It's a, in, an international bill of rights. 
and we implement inter this international bill, bill of rights through the article 3 of the bill of rights of in the 1987 constitution so lahat po ng um, constitutional rights that are guaranteed are found in article 3 of the 1987 constitution um so let me just talk about um, a little bit about um, RBA or rights-based approach. Actually, there is really no um, definition of what RBA. It's an approach. It's a strategy. Uh, what is clear when um, we in government talk about a rights-based approach is that we need to recognize, bring in human rights perspectives in the work of government, in the operations of government, because we, in government, we are all development workers. So ano ba ang rason liter of government? Andito kami, hindi para sumweldo, nandito kami for the citizens, for the Filipinos, um, para sa pagpapaunlad, pagpapayaman ng bansa natin. Um, from womb to tomb, nandyan ang gobyerno. Um, alam ko na pagkamin sa naiisip natin, itong gobyerno na to, instead na mapadali ang buhay namin, they impose too much rules, bureaucratic red tape. But that's uh, uh, an issue, a problem um, that is addressed by a rights-based approach. But the end goal is really um, to ensure that development is for all. Walang kinikilingan. Kahit ano ka pang paniniwala, anong edad, ano ang um, iyong kasarian, ano ang gender orientation, sexual orientation mo, uh, napakahalaga na uh, mag-converge ang uh, karapatang bantao at ang um, uh, pag-unlad. Uh, it is, as mentioned by um, Sunny, it is also a framework. It's, it's a framework which helps the government implement the UDHR or in Universal Declaration on Human Rights. Uh, we want to accelerate our compliance to UDHR. That's why we're using this rights-based approach. Actually, um, hindi pa naman ito matagal na matagal yung rights-based approach. Um, uh, but it's been with the Philippine government for more than a decade. And I've sat in um, the initial discussion on rights-based approach. Um, and it's being looked at as a framework. Um, Nagme-mainstream, kung nagme-mainstream tayo ng gender uh, quality perspectives in government, we are as well um, mainstreaming rights, um, human rights in the public sector. So it's also a technique um, of applying standards. Ano ba yung mga pamantayan natin? Ano ba yung um, pagrespeto sa mga karapatang tao na dapat isulong in the operations of government? Um, siguro tatanong niyo bakit? Ah, kasi ang gobyerno, andyan siya, ubiquitous. Uh, tumingin ka sa paligid mo, sino makikita mo? There's local government officials. Um, there's national government agencies. Pag pinanganak ka, you have, you have to get your uh, birth certificate. At pag namatay ka, um, ang mga kaanak mo ay kukuha ng death certificate. All of this are actually services that are performed by government. And so it's very important that uh, we in government realize the importance of uh, recognizing human rights, rights of every individual, whether you are a client, whether you are an employee. So hindi lang naman human right ng kliyente, kundi human right ng mga empleyado. And I'll focus about um, human rights of workers or human rights in the workplace. So the challenge is, how do we integrate all of these human rights principles in governance and development process? That's why uh, I'll be sharing with you two RBA tools um, as um, a form of um, integration of these human rights uh, principles in government operations. So, um, ano ba yung framework? Ano ba yung pamantayan? How do we look at rights-based approach? Um, the, the first one uh, that's really very critical is that what is central to rights-based approach is human beings. Walang iba. It's not the organization, but it's the individual. 
So the center of development, and as we say, development is for all, meaning regardless of your sex, your gender uh, identity, your sexual orientation, your age, uh, your preference, um, your social and economic status, your political affiliation, um, it doesn't matter. The central um, to development is a human being. Um, and we look at the rights more than we look at the needs. Ano ba talaga ang karapatan niya? Yung inherent sa kanya bilang tao. Hindi yung ano ang kailangan niya ngayon. Kundi uh, the very basic, what's the basic human right? And the second um, essential um, part or component of a rights-based approach or frameworks that all human beings have specific responsibilities in development. Um, ibig pong sabihin ito is hindi lang ano ang aking, ang aking um, pangailangan, hindi lang ano ba yung uh, dapat ma-demand ko from um, the public sector, from the government. Importante din to recognize in the RBA framework Ano naman ang aking responsibility? So, um, I will be, I'll be mentioning two, um, two, print, um, two concepts. The first concept is um, duty bearer. And the second concept is claim holder. So, sino ba ang mga duty bearer? Sino ba ang kailangan na maglingkod, um, mag-implement ng human rights principles or RBA framework? So, they are called uh, duty bearer. Sino naman ang holder? claim holder, sino ang claimants nitong human rights. Okay, so both of them um, have specific responsibilities. Hindi porke um, claim holder ka, we are just going to demand. Lahat po tayo is a claim holder. Uh, nagkataon lang na for us in government, we are uh, in government that dispense, uh, that dispense um, services that performs governmental functions, but we are also um, not just um, a claim holder, uh, uh, we are not just a uh, duty bearer, but we're also a claim holder. Meron din kaming um, karapatan uh, na, na pwedeng idiman um, um, sa, sa gobyerno or kung sino man yung tinatawag natin na state obligor. At pangal, pangatlong importante yung um, essential uh, part or component of the RBA frameworks that states just like the Philippines as a state, um, uh, to create and sustain an, an, an enabling environment and take appropriate um, action to promote, protect, and fulfill human rights. So it's a triple um, um, requirement needed uh, or imposed or prescribed on um, state obligor or states. You have to promote, we have to promote protect, and fulfill um, human rights. So, um, how do we apply that in governance and development? So, ito yung, um, as I mentioned earlier, these are, there are more questions, but I've um, chosen um, only f four questions that we uh, we will talk about. So, the first one is, see no claim holders um, who who should claim or demand for their rights. It's very important to know who these are because baka naman hindi siya ang nangangailangan, nangangailangan or hindi siya ang um, we're barking at the wrong tree. The second is, ano ba yung kailangan niya? Ano ba yung kailangan i-fulfill ng government? What kind of human right is it that we are concerned with? Um, and number three, who are the duty bearers? Sino ba? Sino ba, baka naman iba yung binabatokan natin, um, hindi naman pala, let's say, Civil Service Commission, it should be pala Professional Regulatory Commission or PRC. Minsan, uh, nakoconfuse ang mga tao uh, between CSC and PRC. So, baka ang duty bearer ay PRC, hindi CSC. Or baka naman CSC, not PRC. So, it's very important uh, to distinguish uh, amongst many um agencies of state who are the duty bearers. The third, the fourth question that we ask um, when we apply RBA in governance is, ano ba yung costs that affect the capacities? Bakit hindi ma-deliver ng isang um, 
ahensya, um, yung claim ng mga claim holder, bakit hindi niya magawa? Um, halimbawa, pagpapatubig, let's say, um, local government official, uh, local governments, they are the duty bearers. They're supposed to provide clean, safety po safe, potable water. So, yun yung kiniklaim na natin, mga um, citizen, lo local uh, residents. And then there, there are equations or places in the Philippines that still do not have um, clean, potable, uh, safe water. So the question is, where's the gap? Bakit hindi niya kaya na i-deliver itong karapatan niya na uh, mabuhay sa pamamagitan ng malinis na, na patubig? Okay? So, ang um, panglima na importante itanong is that, so, if this is the gap, what are we supposed to do to address the gap? What should be the rights-based measures or actions? So, um, these are, if you, you take a deeper look at these questions, medyo may pagka-generic um, ang mga pinag-uusapan dito because you can still apply the you can also apply this in other areas of life, other areas of work. It's very important to distinguish sino ang claim holder kasi para at least alam nung nasa gobyerno ang dapat niyong bigyan or uh, like, uh, i-fulfill yung rights. Sino naman ang dapat mag, uh, may duty to fulfill the rights. So how are we mainstreaming um, this approach in human resource policies and human resource management? So sabi ni Sani kanina, uh, why is it important to understand this concept, especially that we are HR managers, we are working on HR, because we deal with people. And when we deal with people, um, it's important to recognize the human dignity. Um, human dignity is also very important to be recognized in terms of relationships. Um, kasi nga, ang, ang mga human resource managers, those working in HR, um, hindi lang sila business partner, hindi lang sila change agent, but they are also, um, they're not just admin um, expert, but they are also, we are also uh, employee welfare champion. So it's very important um, to understand um, this kind of framework when we uh, devise or develop uh, policies. So ito yung um, challenge in the Civil Service Commission because our um, policies influence 1.8 million employees in government. So it's really quite a huge challenge um, um, for us. Um, we, we are also challenged by um, um, adequacy in terms of technology and later in, uh, in your e, um, EHR, kumustahan, you might want to discuss technology also as a source of difficulty or challenge um, in terms of fulfilling um, human rights. Kasi halimbawa, um, you want a speedy trial. Okay? Um, while it's a um, speed, right to speedy trial is found in, um, in criminal procedures, uh, it's also akin to ensuring uh, that, pe that people in government or uh, in people uh, working in our um, uh, workplace uh, uh, workplaces are afforded um, the right to due process the right to um, uh, um, faster disposition or speedy disposition of cases and I will give you um, an example um, later on so um, so sa ngayon, um, because of COVID-19 pandemic the um, um, Supreme Court issued um, um, it's new rules, no? Uh, how to deal with um, speeding up or facilitating um, disposition of cases. The Civil Service Commission is also looking into that. Because, of course, there are questions that have been been before the Civil Service Commission. So, how can it be handled? And so, um, honestly, um, there are many cases that um, uh, adjudication of civil service cases. Um, stop for a, quite a while, especially uh, during our um, enhanced community quarantine. And uh, since now, uh, we and GC, GCQ, um, we are starting uh, to, um, to look into um, disposition of um, cases. 
um, mindful of the need for um, physical uh, distancing. Okay, so how do we mainstream this? Um, of course, in, in terms of policy statement, uh, we subscribe to um, the Bill of Rights uh, and Article 3 has 22 sections no, in the 1987 Constitution. And um, relating that to um, a state declaration or a policy declaration, that state values the dignity of every human person. So ito palagi yung ina-underscore natin. Um, nakalimutan na ang lahat. And we in, the, in government perform our function. It is mind, we are mindful that we value, should value the dignity of every human person. And guarantee full respect. Sabi dito hindi small respect, but it's really underscoring full respect for human rights. Um, ito yung um, the guarantee that is afforded to every um, Filipino citizen under the 1987 Constitution. Okay. So, um, meron um, humahawak na ahensya um, sa human rights. Ang um, may oversight responsibility ng human rights in, in government is the Office of the Commission on Human Rights or the um, um, human Rights, CHR. Um, there's an international monitoring office that collaborates with the Strategic Development and Planning Office of the Commission on Human Rights. Kaya uh, maraming, maraming napapansin ninyo sa balita if um, you listen to news um, that are questioned or are asked by um, the Commission on Human Rights when there are breaches of um, human um, rights laws in our country. Okay. Um, so since Civil Service Commission, we have our own Bible. Um, your Bible in the private sector is the labor code. Our Bible in the Civil Service Commission, marami, but uh, very basic for the Civil Service is the Revised Administrative Code of 1987. And out of uh, our rules on investigation or on administrative cases in the civil service. So, merong uh, relatively um, enhan new enhancements of um, the rules. Um, itong tinatawag namin na RACS. So, ito, um, these are procedures, uh, the way we deal with admin cases. So, a civil service commission, not just um, as part of its HR work or human resource work, we adjudicate cases. So meron kaming quasi-judicial function in government. We decide cases in the same way that heads of agencies in different, um, in government has, um, have concurrent juris disciplinary jurisdiction. So ang CSC meron din um, jurisdiction over um, disciplinary cases in government. So um, looking at itong uh, portion lang ng aming function ito. Um, this is just an example and um, uh, pulling out the questions that I've shown you earlier, we ask who are the claim holders? Sino ba yung vulnerable? Who are the disadvantaged groups in the society? Or who in, um, not just society but specifically the clients um, in the Civil Service Commission? Let's say for adjudication of administrative cases, sino yung vulnerable or disadvantage? So, um, siguro what comes to mind first are those who are, um, whose cases are filed against. So, these are the respondents, okay? Uh, of course, the aggrieved party also um, are not just those who are respondents, but also those who have filed the cases. Uh, presumably because they felt that their rights uh, have been violated by certain individuals. Um, we also talk about uh, earlier um, dealing with ano ba yung normative content? What are the rights that are violated? And I'll give you um, some of this. Um, so so um, when we talk about normative content or elements of the rights that are, are violated, um, we understand this to mean the virus rights that are afforded or guaranteed by the Constitution. Himbawa, the right uh, equality and non-discrimination, um, freedom of expression or um, opinion. So in the public sector, uh, there 
there was already a Supreme Court decision or doctrine that uh, even if we are in government, we, we work as development workers, we are also afforded the freedom to express our own opinion. Hindi, pa, hindi, pa, hindi naman kailangan na kami ay tahimik lamang, um, but um, we can also express our um, opinion. So this, um, there's a right to decent work, um, right to health, decent work, importante rin na uh, uh, we are able to provide um, facilities that are appropriate or gadgets that are, are appropriate for people to be able to do uh, their work or to function as, um, as, uh, as required. So, um, tinatanong yung duty bearers, sino yung mag address ng human rights, uh, ano yung specific duties that are involved. So, ano yung reason kung bakit hindi nila ma magawa um, ang kanilang trabaho as um, duty bearer, bearer. Um, does it have something to do with system? Palpak ba yung sistema? Hindi ba maayos? Uh, mayroon bang event na nangyari? Kat na hindi nangyari kaya uh, ma marami mga services ang hindi na perform during the lockdown. Um, attitudes ba? Behavior ba? O wala lang talagang capacity yung mga stakeholders? Okay, so these are some of the questions um, that we address um, when we deliberate on the kinds of policies that we, sh we issue in the civil service. So what are the tools? I'll just show you um, um, two matrices. So the first matrix is uh, in, uh, very important to determine sino talaga yung claim holder. When we talk about claim holder, ito yung mga vulnerable disadvantaged group. So important to be able to map out who these are and to what they are entitled. Ano ba ang um, problema nila? Ano ba yung karapatan na dapat ay ina-uphold or fulfill? Uh, at paano natin i-address? So that's just basically what's in, um, in the tool. On the other hand, um, the next tool is for the duty holder or the duty bearer. Okay? Uh, we analyze also... Uh, so, palagi ko kanina ay na-emphasize um, ano ba ang duty or level or levels of obligation. The first one is to respect, to protect, and fulfill. So, irespeto, protectahan, and um, fulfill. Okay. So, the, this is um, just a... a uh, an example, um, this is a live case that uh, really happened within uh, an agency. Hindi ko na lang sabihin kung sino. So, kwento ko lang. Um, si Marlo, um, he was a driver of, um, of a government official for more than 20 years That when, it, when this uh, incident happened. Um, his vehicle, it's a government-issued vehicle, hit a truck while uh, traversing Commonwealth Avenue. So, nagmamaneho siya. Um, well, because um, it hit the truck, the government car sustained uh, broken tail lights. Na, medyo na hit din yung bumper, um, leaving um, some scratches. So, um, the estimate of the damage was about 36,000 pesos. So, so, yung property office where the, the the um, Mario works um, filed a report and a, a complaint was filed before the office for their legal affairs. Um, what was the, the admin case? The admin case that was filed before the head of the agency was for negligence. Kasi hindi mo pinagbutihan ng pagmaneho mo eh. Nahit mo yung truck. Merong, uh, merong sira sa sakayang. Luckily, wala namang nasakta na tao. So, na Walang na-issue na formal charge. In the Civil Service Commission, if there is no uh, formal charge issued, uh, it, it remains a complaint. Um, still, there is still yet no case. Uh, but that complaint um, um, lagged on for five years. And walang, walang decision, walang whatsoever hearing that was held. So, the question here is, sino ba ang vulnerable dito? Sino ba yung disadvantaged person dito? 
Sino yung claim holder? Si Mario? Bakit siya naging vulnerable? Um, meron kasing rule then in in the civil service ka, uh, at the time uh, na kapag meron kang um, kom may complaint against you, um, at the time that this happened, he was unable to um, file or apply for um, loans uh, with a go another government institution. And alam nyo naman ang, ang sweldo ng mga and drivers in government, medyo mali, hindi ganong kalakihan. And so for five years, uh, he wasn't able to uh, secure a loan. So um, he felt chastised um, um, and felt disadvantaged over this. Sino yung duty bearers dito? Meron bang gusto sumagot, mag-chat? Um, sino ba ang kailangan mag-perform ng function sa kanya? So, ang pinakamalapit ay yung legal office. But um, the, the one responsible in terms of um, the performance of a quasi-judicial function is the head of office because the head of the office has the disciplinary jurisdiction. Okay? Um, at the end of the day, it's the head of the office is supposed to um, have ensured the process um, has taken place. So, ano yung human right issue dito? Y issue niya dito is the right to um, uh, speedy disposition of his case. And so um, it's a concern um, that has been brought before uh, the agency. And he wrote a letter to the head of the agency. And how did this case develop? Ano ang nangyari dito? So the, the the head of the agency took a look at um, Mr. Combs' um, prevailing and the issues that, um, that the claim holder or Mario addressed, uh, wanted the, the, uh, the agency to address. And finally, the, um, the agency, the head of the agency um, dismissed um, uh, the case or the complaint against him um, for failure of the institution to provide a speedy dis disposition of case. So this is how um, rights-based approach um, was used in disposing of um, this particular complaint. So there are just um, some examples of civil service policies um, that I'm going to share with you um, using rights-based approach. One, and I know you have this also, is a maternity leave. Um, years ago, um, solo parents, yung mga single parents, no, um, we're not able to enjoy uh, maternity leave. But because uh, a solo parent act, it's a law, was issued, um, that this distinction no longer existed. So um, solo parents now can now, en can now enjoy maternity leave. So it provides a whole um, work, equal work opportunity um, uh, to um, to solo parents, um, in um, before 1995, when um, uh, um, harassment, uh, anti-sexual harassment law was um, issued, um, sexual harassment policies have already been um, set up by the Civil Service Commission. Um, before that time in 1995, mayroon hindi pati talaga na sexual harassment as an offense. Um, but um, some other um, offense, um, grave misconduct, depends on the gravity of um, sexual harassment. Because at that time, wala pa noon. So in 19, it was only in 1995 that we called we call the spade a spade. So um, ngayon, no, na, this is being reviewed uh, by Congress. Uh, the, while this pertains to both men and women as harass, um, can be harassed, and can also be harassers. Um, the current law does not recognize a peer-to-peer -peer, um, sexual harassment. However, in the Civil Service Commission, we recognize that hindi kailangan na, na may isang mas mataas para sabihin sexual harassment happen. Uh, pwede magkaparehas sa position, let's say both are managers, um, sexual harassment can occur between these two individuals. Uh, we also have the right to organize while, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's still as yet no um, 
provision under uh, Executive Order 180 um, on public sector unionism to um, the right to start, start. But we can organize, um, we can accredit and register, we can register and accredit uh, organiz employee organization. Um, you also know that um, we have uh, basic standards on um, compensation. We are now on the fifth um, uh, fifth salary standardization law. Uh, that's uh, we call that SSL. And uh, we in the past um, there was salary distortion. Yung mga kahit mas mataas na yung position niya, mas mas mababa ang sweldo niya kumpara doon sa uh, mas mababa na salary grade sa kanya kung narating na nung mas mababa ang highest step. In government, in every salary grade level, um, there are eight steps. So yung kunyaring salary grade um, 17 na nasa step 8, pw pwedeng mas malaki yung sweldo niya noon sa salary grade 8 and step 1. But because of the recognition that um, there has to be equal pay for equal work equity, um, the salary distortion was averted in the succeeding SSL. Um, law. Um, because of the 19, COVID-19 pa pandemic, we have to secure the right to help health of um, workers. And so the Civil Service Commission um, issued a memorandum circular providing for alternative work arrangements. So that that para ang hirap um, i recognize that people can work from home. Why? Because um, some individuals, managers also find difficulty um, to determine which ones can be delivered in terms of outputs. But now, um, uh, uh, changes have, have a way of, um, 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 well, the COVID-19 pandemic has a way of changing the landscape. And so, um, gusto man o hindi, um, alternative work arrangements um, have been um, devised to include work from home. Um, what's also being included is uh, um, in, in the public sector, um, they are also um, working from home. So, yun yung, um, especially the um, commission I'm very much concerned um, about vulnerable groups. So, um, this will be my second to the last slide. Um, just a few more examples. Um, when you come into government um, in our, or uh, hold a government post, you are to, to meet certain qualification standards. So um, what are we trying to do? We're trying to ensure that there's no discrimination in hiring. Although I know that you might have some horror stories, um, but the basic principle is that for you to hold a position government, you're supposed to meet qualification standards. Who's going to assess? There's a human resource promotion and selection selection board. Um, learning and development is a shared responsibility. Dati rate kung sino lang ang paborito, ngayon ay hindi na. Kasi importante, it's based, learning and development intervention should be based on um, one's needs, learning needs. Because we have introduced individual um, um, individual development plan. In terms of performance management, we are very mindful of, of the cycle uh, and the beginning performance planning. There should be targets uh, versus outputs at the end of the per performance appraisal. There's also a team that calibrates or take, takes a look at um, targets and outputs across um, the offices. Uh, we are also promoting uh, occupational safety and health standards in the public sector. Napaka matagal na nasunda nito because the, the last time that we talk about reasonable working conditions was in 1989. And only this year or last year, um, late last year, that we, we, have, we were able to issue um, standards for occupational safety and health. And um, last example that I'd like to share with you is that in government, sabi nga nila, ang hirap naman mag, ang hirap sa gobyerno kasi, well, on the one hand, maganda siya kasi may security tenure, pero on the other, sabi na kung um, non-performer, ang hirap tanggalin. Well, why? Because in government, um, yung separation or termination should be for just cause and uh, due process. The same way with uh, those working in the private sector. 
So I'm um, just leaving you with this. Uh, Hale and William said that um, human beings are human beings. So just like, just treat everyone like that. So um, if you have questions, feel free to uh, raise them. So thank you so much, uh, Sunny. I'll give you the, um, the floor over to you.